I'm Luke. And I'm Malachi. And we're from the Santa Barbara Middle School Teen Press, here today with... Uh, Mason Matthews. Thank you for meeting with us today, M Mason. Thank you. So we learned that you, work for the, you worked for the Santa Barbara Historical Museum for over six years. What stood out to you in your time working there? So for six years before teaching history, I worked in public history at a local museum. And um, I learned a lot while working there. Uh, I think the biggest thing that's helped me as a history teacher is learning about our local community's history because um, I think big world events are obviously important, but people are more interested in the world directly around them. So being able to have uh, our local community history, we're a small town, but we actually are connected to a lot of things in the big picture of history. Um, and so I really love being able to, to draw upon that in my class. And how do you bring what you learned at the museum into the classroom? I think I brought it a couple ways. Um, at the museum, I designed and installed exhibits, so I kind of tried to turn my classroom into like a museum exhibit. Uh, so I, uh, that was really fun to do. We took that field trip in the beginning of the year, right, to the historical museum and other historical sites around town. We did a walking tour, uh, so that was a lot of fun. Um, and I've even included things from like Santa Barbara News Press articles from the 30s and 40s when we learned about World War II, right? So um, really uh, everything from design to, uh, to management to uh, local history, all of those are skills that I developed before even stepping into a classroom. And so as a follow-up question, you said that you like you designed exhibits. What was your favorite one that you designed? That's a great question. Uh, we did an exhibit in, along with the museum from Spain called Designing America, where we learned uh, and shared our local, both Santa Barbara's connection to and also the United States overall, um, our country's connection to Spanish architecture. Uh, Spain was actually the first European country to really colonize the Americas and their influence is all over, including famously in our town. So that was really cool getting to work with curators and designers from Spain here in Santa Barbara on this joint exhibit. That was, that was probably my favorite one we got to do. We heard that you used to teach at Santa Barbara High School. How does teaching at SVMS compare to that? Yeah, when I was in my teaching program, I taught at Santa Barbara High School for almost an entire year. And uh, at the high school, I taught US history, and I teach US history now in eighth grade. So um, a lot of the lessons that I taught at the high school, I'm able to use with our eighth graders. We've got a really bright group here that I think is uh, willing to accept the challenge of doing high school level work. Um, and yeah, I do think that middle school, there's definitely some big differences between the high school. I think that middle schoolers are a lot goofier, uh, which I really enjoy. Um, in high school, the challenge is getting students to open up and talk, whereas with middle school, the challenge is to getting uh, kids to maybe kind of settle down and listen a little bit more. Um, but I love teaching at the high school. I thought I was going to be a high school teacher for my career, but I'm so grateful I ended up here because I really think eighth grade is a, is a special time to teach, and I'm really grateful for this opportunity. We learned that you taught 11th grade U.S. history. How, does, how did you turn what you learned teaching 11th grade into teaching 8th graders? That's a good question. Um, we cover some, of the, some similar material. Um, the nice thing about teaching at middle school is as a private school, um, I'm not bound by state curriculum. I don't have to teach certain standards or anything. So I could really teach about whatever I want in U.S. history, right? So my class is kind of a survey um, of key moments in U.S. history. Uh, you could spend years on this topic. Unfortunately, we only have several months to do it, right, in our limited school calendar. Uh, so I really kind of just take the parts of U.S. history that I either know the most about or are most interested in or think are most relevant to things happening in the world today. And I try and kind of tailor the curriculum to world events. So right now, there's this big conflict between Russia and the Ukraine. And I've been teaching about things like the, the First World War um, and, and other events in US history that might help us understand what's going on now in the world today. Um, so, it, But I really love the freedom of being able to, to, to go as specific about things as we want to do. We learned a lot about the Civil War, uh, down to even what soldiers ate in their regular diet then when we made Johnny cakes, right? And we've also seen big picture things as well. So. Um, that freedom um, for curriculum at the school is, is really, really exciting as a history teacher. And we understand that you enjoy traveling. Which of your journeys has affected you most deeply? 
Who I think uh, anyone who's traveled knows that every trip affects you in some way, right? Uh, I'm lucky enough to, uh, I've been to 28 countries at this point across six continents. So um, every trip has impacted me in, in some way. I think as a history teacher, the trip that stood out to me the most was when I studied abroad in Germany uh, when I was in college. So um, I got to live in Berlin and um, learn about the Cold War, the World Wars, um, all sorts of uh, 20th century history in Berlin, which was really cool. So as a historian, that trip was the most impactful. But just as an individual, um, in 2019, I took a leave of absence from the museum and I traveled for four months from uh, New Zealand all the way to Vietnam. So going through uh, the Pacific and through Southeast Asia, it challenged me. I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about the world. And uh, that trip was uh, definitely the most impactful. And that was the trip that made me realize, OK, I've traveled enough. I'm ready to start my career as a teacher. And so you've been to six continents. Do you have any interest in visiting the seventh? I do. I would love to visit Antarctica one day, uh, hang out with some penguins down there. Uh, we'll see when it happens. Maybe, uh, maybe hopefully before my 40th birthday. Uh, but I hit six by my 30th, so that was, uh, that was a big goal of mine, and I'm really happy that I, that I did that. We've heard that you love Liverpool FC. Tell us about the game of English football. Uh, I could talk to you for an hour about the, uh, the game of the real football. Uh, yeah, I'm a big Liverpool fan. Uh, if you don't know, Liverpool was uh, the best team in Europe in the 70s and 80s. Uh, they were kind of like what the Patriots were in the 2000s for American football, is what Liverpool was like in the 70s and 80s. And uh, luckily, I got to see as a Liverpool fan, I got to see us win the Champions League, which is like the Super Bowl of European uh, football. And I also got to see us win the Premier League, which is like um, just the English League. Uh, Liverpool won both of those in the past couple years. So uh, we waited 30 years to win the English League again. So I'm glad I got to see that. And uh, yeah, it's um, I love soccer. And fun fact, there, I didn't actually play soccer or watch soccer when I was in middle school or high school. It wasn't until I was in college that uh, my friends all played FIFA, the soccer video game. Uh, so I started playing FIFA with them, and I was like, wait, why don't we just play this in real life? So that's how I got into playing soccer and watching soccer. It, uh, it all came down to my friends back at UCSB in undergrad. Do you feel Liverpool's progress um, has inspired you in any way? Yeah, I mean, they're, uh, the club's motto, you can see it on the scarf up my, on the wall up there, it says, you'll never walk alone. And uh, I love that motto. Uh, I actually, on the first day of school, you might remember Luke, I, I shared that motto with the class because that's how I feel about um, the eighth grade and also just the school and our community, right? Um, you'll never walk alone when you have 62 other, uh, you know, eighth graders there with you um, and an amazing eighth grade team and all the amazing staff members who work at middle school. So um, I think that that phrase, even though it's, it's a Liverpool phrase, I think it totally connects to the middle school philosophy as well. Thank you. And if you could recommend one historical movie to us, what would it be? Ooh, that's tough. I could recommend about 100. But um, I think if I had to recommend one, especially to students your age, I'd probably say Jojo Rabbit, which uh, maybe you've seen before. But um, what I love about that movie is that it, uh, it deals with a really dark chapter in history, like the final days of World War II. Um, some really heavy themes, right? Um, but also, it's really funny. Um, and that's kind of how I try and structure my classes. We, we talk about some heavy things in history class, right? War, genocide, race and class, all these really big topics, right? So um, I do think that uh, you need to balance out some of the heaviness with some, with some laughs every now and then. So I think that movie does a really good job of, uh, of balancing those two. Yeah, thank you so much for meeting with us, Mason. Thank you. Sorry, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Team Press. I appreciate the opportunity.